Marketer, which one of these buttons is going to produce the highest conversion? Take a quick look. There are five. Are you certain? Let's look at the buttons in context. Discover a better way of working. Web-based email, calendar, and documents. Does that change your opinion? Go ahead and pick, and I'll now show you the result. Here it is. Treatment 5 won by 52%. Wow. What's going on here? Marketers, we invest 90% of our energy getting people up to the CTA, and it's the climax of our work. And yet, by the time we get this far in our message, we're tired, and we often just sling a button and a form on a page. We get way less than we should. So that's the problem. What do we do? How do we develop CTAs that add to the purchase momentum, that drive maximum conversion? We're on section five of the landing page blueprint. In this section, we're going to discover the foundational understanding that powers extraordinary results with your CTA. There are two keys, and here's the first. We need to understand decision momentum. To help you get this, I'm going to do a rapid review of three critical points I've taught in the past. Here we are. People are not falling in the funnel. They're falling out. Marketer gravity is not your friend. In order to truly grasp our work as a marketer, we need to reverse our image of the funnel. Number two, the funnel is not powered by clicks. It's powered by micro yeses. And number three, the marketer cannot drive traffic. You can only coax it. Gravity is working against us. The marketer has to somehow field a psychological force that is strong enough to overcome the resistance in the marketplace. We talk about this in Fast Class 17. Your weapon is your value proposition. But it connects to motivation, and motivation begins in the mind. Motivation doesn't start in the channel. Out here, as someone contemplates a want, inside of their mind, the motivation is beginning. And that motivation will cause them to move through a series of steps, each one denoted by a micro yes that leads them eventually to here. Our trick now is to move them through this page, or in this case, down it, in a journey that involves multiple micro yeses and climaxes here at the CTA and its follow through. The problem is we don't understand the difference between the force we're exerting through a properly constructed CTA and the existing momentum in the purchase that's taking place because of other factors. If you want to learn a lot in a short period of time, give me, I don't know, 60 seconds and let me say some things very fast and then I'm going to cash it in with examples. So here we go. Number one, the marketer must target the epicenter of the customer's desire. I've said that many times. You can't hear it enough. In marketing physics, the momentum of the purchase can increase as the buyer proceeds. You say, why? It's the interplay between the motivation of the buyer the force of the value proposition, the equity of the brand, and committed motion. The more they move, they're already in action. It's easier to keep them moving. Brand equity has built-in trust, and you can leverage that trust to keep people moving. But sometimes that's not enough. If motivation reaches a high enough threshold, it is sufficient to push through the friction of the call to action. But if not, we've got to do more to create momentum, more forward motion. So let me share with you two buttons right now. Subscribe now and upgrade now. Which one is the best? Tell me why. Think, think, think. Let me explain the winner and let me tell you why. Upgrade now produced a 75% increase. You say 75%, why? Well, first of all, do you really wanna subscribe? No, you want something and subscribing is the means to an end. You could say the same thing about upgrade, but upgrade is closer to what you want. Upgrade is something you came for. Subscribe is something that the company exists for. The difference between the two is that the second button offers me a bit more value. And it adds to the momentum that's being developed as someone is moving through the purchase process. That brings us to point two. We need to understand the psychological calculus of our call to action. Let's go back to the original case study. 
There were five buttons. Think of each of these as involving a psychological calculus. Embody that calculus in a fulcrum. That fulcrum has perceived value and perceived cost. The question is, which one of these five has the highest net score? Let's look at the top two. Get started now is the winner. Start free trial was number two. Now I can isolate the positive sides of that fulcrum pretty easily. People want to get it now. They want to get something. They want to get started. So you have get, positive word. You have started, present tense. And you have now, double down on the present tense. Three positives. Let's look at start free trial. Well, start is positive. Free seems positive, but it also connotates there may be a catch and there's clearly an upsell coming. Trial is a negative word that should have never been combined with free in marketing, but it is. And we know what it means, but it always involves cumbersome steps, processes, credit cards, etc. So it's not entirely positive. Ultimately, the fulcrum for get started now has more perceived value than the fulcrum for start free trial. And so we tip the additional force of that. Now, you might think of it like this. If the overall purchase has a lot of momentum, and let's suppose that the value, that's perceived value, is, let's give it a score. Let's say it's a, let's say it's a six. And the perceived cost, let's say, is a five. Well, that's enough to get most people through. But as motivation declines, you need a little extra weight to put onto the perceived value side. How do we do that? That comes from this button and this CTA. We word these so that they have their own process level value proposition. You say process level? Yeah, there are four types. I teach those in more advanced classes. But ultimately, the action of moving through the site requires a yes. So it has its own sort of sub value proposition. And a strong CTA here will add more weight to the perceived value and you'll be able to see the fulcrum tip and conversion go up. This brings us to our challenge. We've got to learn in the next few sessions all the ways we can take a B2B form for lead gen e-commerce, subscriptions, etc., and weight them with process level value prop so that we intensify the satisfaction, the desire, and the revenue. Your job is special. The marketer as both scientist and poet transcends the ordinary interrogative, infusing the offer with the power and elegance of a well-crafted value proposition. It's a sort of mental fulcrum where the scales are tipped in favor of the perceived value. Marketer, stop what you're doing for just a moment and just think with me. To get the most out of our time together, there needs to be a feedback loop. So I'm going to ask you to participate. Look at these two calls to action. They're for a university. Tell me which one will produce the highest ultimate conversion. That would be enrollment. As you think about that, I'm going to ask you to put your your answer in the YouTube comments and then tell us why so we can interact around it and learn together. Thanks. <laughs>